scripture is simply setting a guideline. However, we find ourselves in an era where we don't do the proper homework. And then next thing you know, we got tradition that then turned into doctrine. And you got folks that, that, that if they work a job where they, where, where they wear pants, they can't go to choir rehearsal and sing for the Lord because they got pants on. Oh I know a situation. See, I, see, as a little boy, I was quiet, but I was paying attention. It was a young, it was a young lady that she really could sing, but she, she worked in nursing. And she wore pants in nursing. You know, it was a time when the women wore dresses in nursing, but she was in the era where the women started wearing uniforms that was pants. And it was too much for her to try to go home and change into a dress and make it to a rehearsal without being on time. So this woman that could sing, that God had anointed her to sing, had gifted her to sing, had to sit in the audience. Because she couldn't make it to rehearsal because she had on pants. Because she couldn't step in the sanctuary. And I say, God, I say when I become a pastor, I wasn't even preaching yet. I say, I'm going to let them know if you got on pants, Come on in here up in a minute. As long as it ain't up to you, as my mama say, your neck. As long as it ain't up to your neck, come on in here. In because the Bible don't say that. What preacher, what does the Bible say? Are we learning today? 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 says in the New Living Trans Translation, and I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent, appropriate clothing that does not draw attention to themselves. Let me say that again. They should wear decent, appropriate clothing that does not draw attention to themselves. Now, what they've been teaching and passing down in tradition, Scripture don't say that. This is what Scripture say. Dress appropriate. You know what? I, I never will forget. I went to a picnic and the pastor looked like it was Sunday morning. You was out of order, Doc. Wear the appropriate things at the appropriate time. I mean, it's, it's just, it just got crazy that you got, got Christians that they going too far one way and too far the other way and majoring in the minors and minoring in the majors. You know what I'm talking about? Don't pick real, my next one, don't pick clothing that draws attention to yourself that may cause a distraction because things are falling out. Come on now. Your focus should be on spiritual clothing. Not on the natural clothing. Not if a woman wore jeans or not. Not if a man had a shirt but didn't have no tie. We need to get out of this nonsense that we got to judge folks uh, uh, what they're wearing and if they had tattoos and all that kind of stuff before they can come in God's house. So I'm saying to the president today, come on in if you love Jesus. Come on in if you're trying to find out about Jesus. Come on in no matter what the situation is because we need you in the house so God can do his work. Colossians 2, 21 through 23. In the English Standard Version, it says, Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Refer to things that perish as they are used. Clothes go well. According to human research, precepts and teachings, these have an, an, indeed an appearance of wisdom, but it's only promoting self made religion and asceticism but are in no value in stopping the indulgence of the best. Well, what is that big word I use? Asceticism is a Greek word. It comes from a Greek word. It means to practice the denial of something, physical or psychological, to obtain a spiritual goal. Can I say something? If you can't wear your, long, your dress long enough to make you love God. You can't wear your dress short, short enough to make you hate God. So let's stop focusing on clothes and start focusing on people. Start focusing on lives. Start focusing on scripture. See, spiritual garments and natural garments is two different things. So now what I do, see, when I was a little boy, I couldn't say nothing. I had to be quiet. You know, we start to be quiet. But as a, as a man now, I'll ask people in a minute, what chapter, what verse? You just can't tell me anything now. What chapter, what verse? Because I found out that there were some things that passed down that should have been passed out. <laughs> Can I say that again? They was passed down, but they should have been passed out. 
because there was no foundation. That's why I made a promise to the Lord a long time ago, and I ain't trying to pat Bishop on the back no kind of way. I'll only preach, Lord, what I can prove in Scripture. If I can't find it in Bible, if it can't be supported in Bible, I say, I'll shut my mouth. But anything that your word say, I'll explain to your people. See, what, what all of this about clothes is talking about is that God trying to say, I don't want you to dress like a heart of a gigolo. Come on in your pants. Come on in with your shirt with no cut tie. Come on in your tennis shoe. He don't care about that. He cares about the soul. See, and another thing that bothered me about that, the reason why I began to do my research, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching now, is that why focus, why the, 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 it was focused so much on women and didn't say nothing about men. God don't operate like that. Because you got some men, they got on pants, but they so tight, I don't see how they, I, they can breathe. I don't see how they don't pass out. Well, you got your pants that tight and you a man. Mm -hmm. That's another sermon. You may not dress red light, but if your lifestyle and behavior is red light, you just as bad. Everybody knows somebody that wear long dresses. They wear clothes all the way up to the top. That they just as promiscuous as you be. So don't be fooled by a person's dress and think that they love God and somebody else don't because how you look like or think that they dress. They might just be coming from the club and decide I'm gonna go to church this morning. They was directed to go to church, but when you got there. You ran them off because of how they were stressed. Mm. The scripture starts out by saying the beloved and holy of God. If they're not there yet and when they come in the door, you attack them because of how they dress, what are they going to do? Go right back out the door. Right. Or they might stay, but they never coming back no more. The Lord told me to tell y'all this this morning. Stop running folks off. Because it's a woman with pants. Stop running folks off because they dress too short. Stop running folks off because they have tattoos. Stop, stop, stop looking at folks funny because they don't look like you look. Mm -hmm. Because they don't dress like you dress. Mm -hmm. The scriptures start out by saying the holy and beloved of God. They not there yet. How they gonna get there if you beat them up when they walk in the door? Right, right, right. right. That's right, that's right. Sometimes people wear things that, that is not that, 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 it, that is not for them so much, but the way their body is shaped, it don't fit them like it fits you. You might have a, a, a dress that a woman can wear that's shaped one way that another woman put it, put it on and they look totally different. Mm -hmm. So now because the way the woman's body is shaped, you're going to make one wrong and the other one right, the devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. Mama Brown, I never will forget this as long as I live. Mama, you, Mama Brown say it's a way to do anything. Let me tell you, tell you, show you what I observed my mama do in church as a child, on up to an adult, on up to a preacher, on up to a pastor, on up to a bishop. Mama brought a bag to church with oversized handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. regular handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of safety pins. I seen my mama walk up to a woman, and while she was talking to her, got pins got a smaller handkerchief and covered up the woman's cleavage while it was showing. Right. I saw my mom put a handkerchief over a young woman's thighs right. and thank her for coming and let her know she'd be looking for her next Sunday. I observed my mama walk up to an urchin in a large church and tell the urchin I don't, the spirit telling me don't move this baby, but we need to protect her from them wandering eyes. Mm -hmm. And my mama had the urchin to situate women around this young lady to where there was no man around that was looking at her. Mm -hmm. And I watched that little woman grow up in church and get stronger and stronger, but if they had red eye, my God. when she had that short dress on, she never would have got that. I watched my mama do that. Yes, my God. My God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Y'all, mama been on my mind. I watch mama do that. Oh, God. Mama said, it's a way to do anything, baby. Mm. She said, I might be going on in. Mm. She said, but it's a thing that you're going to see me do. I'm praying for the day. This side had that old woman to know how to walk up to that young woman and say, baby, this is what you need to do. Mm. And do it with so much love and compassion that they're not offended. Mm -hmm. Ask my mama, why, mama, why you do that? Why do you go to such lips to do that? Why do you make sure you don't never leave that bag? Mama say, I don't want to offend them by the little things and they miss the big things. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. Amen. My Lord. Thank she you. said, if you offend them with the simple things, like the lips that they dress and the dress and the brows showing it. She said, because it's already concentrated on the women. Mm -hmm. She yeah. said, she might not never come back. Yeah. But she said, if you show her love when she walked through that door, sure, yeah. and show her decency and modesty, and she sit up under the word of God, she said, baby, that dress don't come down by itself. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus had Outer clothes and inner clothes. We as believers need to understand the difference between outer clothes and inner clothes. Our outer clothes is the arm of God. And the seven pieces to the arm of God in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. Mm -hmm. The belt of truth, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit mm -hmm. and prayer. Sometimes when people mention the armor, they forget prayers on the end right there. Right. And that's because that's part of your uniform. It says, put on the whole arm of God mm -hmm. that you may be able to stand against the schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces, forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. It says in verse 13, therefore put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that uh, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared and movable and victorious, to stand firm and hold your ground having what? The truth around your waist, mm -hmm. uh, put on a blessed breastplate of righteousness, and having yourself strapped with the feet, and your feet strapped with the gospel of peace. And then verse number 16 says, above all, the shield of faith. And 17 says, the helmet of salvation. And 18 is where it talks about prayer and petition. Mm -hmm. Now that brings us to our text. All of that is the outer armor and Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Hello, guys. Welcome, 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 guys. This is Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries. My name is Priscilla Guillory Brown. Some people call me Priscilla. Some people call me Lady P. But this is Priscilla Guillory Brown coming to you with Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries. And we have some wonderful, 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 exciting news that's going on in the ministry, guys. This that we are in need of your help. We need partners in order to help us get the word out about Jesus so that we can share the love of Jesus Christ. We want everyone to be saved and for, for the whole body of Christ to know of Jesus. So, guys, we need your help. We need partnerships. We need partnerships at it at, at the minimum level of ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars. $40 and $50 or more of monthly partners in order for us to continue with the word of God. Guess what, guys? You know, like they say on TV, and wait, and wait. We got a special bonus coming to you guys. For everybody, everyone that donates at least $20 or more, you know you're going to get something for free? You're going to get Bishop K.J. Brown uh, book that he just wrote out called are you ready? And there's a word here that says Harpanza. Look it up. It's in the book. I'm not going to tell you what it means, but look it up. But anyway, Bishop has wrote this wonderful book about the rapture. 
And guys, we need you all to, to, to donate. Every first 100 people that donate at least $20 or more will receive this free book, guys. And guess what else we got going on? Bishop K.J. Brown has built his very own radio station. We are so excited and so happy for this radio station, guys. It's going to bless you. I mean, it is phenomenal. It is, how they say, bananas. You're going to go bananas over this station, guys. Bishop Brown will be preaching at every three hours. Is it three hours? It's three, mm -hmm. six, nine, and 12 a.m. and p.m. Around the clock. Three, six, nine, and 12. Three, six, nine. Just like a cheer. Bishop Brown will be bringing you the word of God. And guess what? It's going to be different messages. It's not going to be the same message you heard at three. It's not going to be the same message you heard at six. It's going to be different messages daily that will be on the radio station. Guys, I mean, Bishop has built this radio station. There's lots of praise and worship. You're going to hear good music, good choir music. You're going to have some contemporary music on there. You're going to have some country music on there. Is it rapping on there too, Bishop? There's going to be raps on there. I mean, guys, Christian raps, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But remember to go to www.bishopkjbrown.org in order to get more information about the ministry and also on, on order for you to click on to the radio station. Bishop Brown, go ahead on and take it away from us. Well, I just want to let everybody know that uh, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is a, a family of ministries. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Zion Tabernacle Church. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries itself. But we also, the way that we do ministry is digital in addition to some one-on-one. -on -one. But we have a radio station, and that was something God just dropped in my lap and told me to do. I, I didn't have any experience on how to build a radio station or how to get everything together. But God told me to put the gospel in their hands. Put the praise in their hands. And I didn't understand. God gave it to me in a dream. And then I, I, I one day, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it, and I had my phone in my hand. And it came to me. That's what God was talking about. And so the radio station has a way you can send a prayer request. It, it gives you the link to send in a prayer request. It talks about uh, how you can uh, listen to the messages. I'll let you know that it's at 3, 6, 9, and 12 a.m. and p.m. And then also uh, it talks about uh, it just talks about Jesus several times a day. And, and, and the thing about it is I wanted some praise, I wanted preaching, and I wanted prayer all in one spot. And God gave all of this for me to do, but we need your help to continue it. Yes. Uh, the radio station, uh, the programming I'm doing, uh, picking out the songs, my wife is helping with that, uh, I'm doing too. Uh, God just putting a lot of hats on for me in terms of what I'm doing, and I'm enjoying the journey. But I need your help. We need your help. Because what we are, and we are a ministry that believes in building, winning lives for a coming Lord. We're not a prosperity theology ministry and all those kind of things. We don't have any kind of gimmicks or anything like that. We just straight up word. Mm -hmm. I preach like that. My wife preaches like that. Storyteller Pastor Simmons preaches like that. We are a word church. We're a word ministry. So I want you to know that we have the radio station we have the building fund that we're doing because we're going to build a ministry facility, a ministry facility. We're just not building a church. We're beyond that. God showed me beyond that. The ministry facility will have the community center. It will have the worship center, and it will have the administrative offices, and that will be the television production and the radio production because what we're doing, we're not, we're not going to stop. We're going to do bigger. We're going to do bigger. Right now, we're on Kingdom Purpose TV. We come on every Sunday at 10 a.m., and we have in the future that it's more stations that we're going to get on because we want to reach the nation. We want to reach the city. We want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ because there is no greater value than your soul. I've been saying it for so many years. Uh, I, I'm excited about doing this commercial because I really uh, – this this – just a little talking, uh, because I don't really like talking about me, but I love talking about Jesus. And I have a passion for this. I have a love for this. Uh, the television is for you. The radio is for you. The app is for your convenience. We send in Bibles to Africa. We've been sending Bibles to Kenya for quite some time. 
Uh, uh, we're going to want to try to continue to do that. I lost uh, contact with the, uh, the young man, the pastor, uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we're going to try to do uh, Kenya again or either Uganda, but we, we continued in our commitment to send Bibles to Africa. The reason why we stopped is that I didn't want to send Bibles and I didn't know it was getting where it was supposed to go. I didn't want, because I want to be, and we are good stewards over that that you give. My mother, Mother Brown, some of you know her, she always said, bless it and stretch it. And so what I do is I, I believe in what she prayed to bless it and stretch it, but also everyone that gives, it could be a dollar a month, a twenty dollars a month, or whatever it is. Anyone that gives to Bishop KJ Brown Ministry, Zion Tabernacle Church, I pray over that gift. I do it personally. I do it personally. I pray over that gift. We you we, we do the uh, offering uh, on, on on Sundays. I, I pray the prayer, but I also take those names. I look at that list as it comes, and I pray for those individuals that God will increase them, that God will increase what goes into their household because everybody wants to move in. Everybody wants to have more, but what we want to do is think about kingdom. So I want you to give not so much as a percentage gift but a priority gift because I want you to give to kingdom because God is, hey, he's coming back. Yes. That, that's what this book is about. I never saw, at this point in time in my life, me being able to be a published author. Author of Are You Ready? And I didn't know what to write on the first page. I sat with an empty screen, an empty sheet of paper, and I said, God, you show me to do this. You're going to have to show me what to do. And now we got a book. Everything that God has shown me has come to pass. And I believe that God is going to use you for the efforts that continue in what we're doing to build the kingdom. In TV, in radio, in community, in counseling, in church, in everything that we're doing. Zion Tabernacle Church, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries works hand in hand. I also want to thank personally, as I'm talking, for Zion Tabernacle Church, and especially Pastor Ellie Simmons, Sister Sharon, uh, Sister Pepper, all those that's been with me through the years. Zion, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministry, we are 17 years old. We're 17 years old. So we're continuing on that consistent gift. We're asking you for that consistent gift because we got work to do. God has given me a vision that has to happen and I believe it's going to happen. I, Sometimes I listen to C.C. Wine sing that song, Believe For It, until I be about to pass out. Because I believe for it. I know what he showed me. I know what he showed me in dream. I know what he showed me in vision. I know what he keeps in my spirit. And so all we're doing is asking for your help. $10 a month, $29 a month, $30, $40, 50 You might even be blessed that you can do $100 a month. But know that it's going to good ground. It might be $10,000 a month, my wife says. You never know. You never know. But guess what? Whatever your gift feels, it's confidential. Mm -hmm. It's confidential. I don't play the such and such game you need to give away. I don't play that. Matter of fact, at Zion Tabernacle Church, not one time have we taken up more than one offering. Right. And the one time that we it almost happened, Pastor Simmons stopped right in the middle of it and said, Stop, don't do it. Pastor going to be upset. Bishop going to be upset. Because he says that this church cannot ever be. So what we're doing is we're asking you, we're giving you an opportunity to bless kingdom. Yeah, God just gave me that. An opportunity to bless kingdom. Our website is bishopkjbrown.org. Our church website is ztchurch.org. And all we want you to do is help in this kingdom work. Because you know what? God wants you to, to win. To win. Amen. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. The greatest miracle is not limbs growing. It's not people being in car accidents and the car flip over and they don't have a scrap. The greatest miracle is salvation. Greatest miracle. Greatest miracle. 
That's why I believe the greatest value is your soul. The Bible says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world? That's a lot, y'all. Gain the whole world and then lose his son. Greatest miracle salvation, the greatest value is your soul. The greatest tragedy is to die and not be saved. Once appointed man to die and after death, judgment, where will you spend eternity? That's the greatest decision you can make. Not what neighborhood you're going to live in, whether it's a gated community, all those kind of things. Are, are, are you going to be with Jesus? Old preachers say, choose this day. He said, do it while the blood is running warm in your veins. And I was a little boy and didn't understand that. But as I got older and, and, and I learned and stuff, I understood that because I went in the hospitals when the bodies was cold. And I understood. He said, you know what? You got to make that decision before you take your last breath. The song said he's the only way. Only way. Everlasting life. True and living. 